I just want to get started by welcoming everybody. And if you don't know me, uh, my name is Kim Chesney, and I wrote a book called Radical Intuition that is sort of the backdrop to a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about today. And I'm also the founder of Intuition Lab, which this will be featured as some of the master classes in our programs and working with our online teachers and students and really learning to use our intuition and our power of insight to do everything better in our lives. And specifically today, we're gonna to talk with Rachel about applying that to slowing down, applying that to business, applying that really to, to becoming that leader that leads from the place of insight and ingenuity and innovation and creativity instead of following the road that everyone else follows. So, so it really does lead us to the secret sauce and the foundation of listening to our intuition is surprise, slowing down. Before we can ever hear our intuition, we have to slow down, which is why Rachel's book is so perfect uh, for those of us that are developing our intuition or are interested in learning more about intuition because it talks about moving into that place of pause. She wrote a beautiful book and I wanna tell you a little bit about her as we get started. She is, um, her name is Rachel O'Meara and she is a women's leadership coach who helps busy professional high achievers learn how to stay out of overwhelm and thrive at work, which I think is something a lot of us uh, can relate to. She uses a proven set of stress reduction tools and strategies to help you feel more empowered, focused, and calm. She's worked for over 13 years at Google, another techie. I love it. I love it. And her, new, in her book, Pause, was one of the top business books for your career. She's been featured in New York Times, Harvard Business Review, and so exciting, her follow-up book to her original book, Pause, Pause the Journal, which we're going to be working with a little bit today, too, is just released, right? So yes, yes. I'm so excited yeah, to have you here, Rachel. It. Yeah, tell us all about it. Yeah, so it was so exciting to have this come out. It came out on February 2nd, so it's only a, a couple of weeks old, really, and, it, and I think it's a compliment to pausing. I call pausing an intentional shift in behavior. And so this is a book really to help us all be intentional with what we can do while we pause. And I'm a big fan of journaling. Who are my journal fans in here? Just type in the, the chat journal, if that's you. I've been in and out of journaling my whole life, but the, the, the real concept is if we're intentional, we can do anything and we can reach our dreams. That's part of this whole book as well. And it's designed the prompts in there and the, the chapters, I've got five chapters, how to use it and why journaling really matters uh, can really just be in service toward your doing. And that's really the whole crux, I think of why I think journaling is so helpful. Mm -hmm. Helps me a lot anyway. Yeah. Well, we are going to be doing some journaling in a little bit. Um, just on that note, I want to tell you a little bit how this event's going to work. We are going, we're going to stick with the hour framework. If we go a little over the Q&A, that's fine. But we're going to start out with a 20 minute talk with Rachel, learning about her secrets with the pause, learning about how they connect to intuition and how this whole sort of process of getting into that stillness and that quiet in your life really is advantageous in, in really everything you do. So we're going to do that for about 20 minutes. And then Rachel's going to take us into a workshop so we can practice some of this stuff so you can experience it for yourself and take away these things to do on your own for the rest of your life forever. And then at the end, we'll open up to Q&A if you have any questions if, about the processes or anything in general that relates to this, we'll be happy to stick around and answer those for you. And also at the end, we'll be giving you two new free gifts. So be sure to stick around and get that. I'm going to be giving away my genius guide for extraordinary insight. And Rachel's going to be giving her breath work booster. So I'm excited to learn more about that too. Breath work in your pocket. <laughs> What's that? Breath work in your pocket. Breath work in your pocket, right? So that's so important. You want to be able to just have that on demand when you want to just take that break, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. So yeah, so this is really an area that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, for those of you who are in Intuition Lab and watching this now, you've heard me talk about this sort of process of slowing down and why it's so integral in uh, really our ability to hear our intuition. There's When we're living these busy, crazy lives, it just creates a kind of static that prevents our intuition from getting in. So we really miss those cues and those insights and those ideas that are just waiting to just kind of drop in. So it's so important to whether we're just, you know, going about our daily life or doing our job at work to slow down, to make that white space on your calendar. I, I, I always say 
do nothing like it's your job. Like that's, it's really important. Like we, we don't ever, we don't do enough of nothing, right? We, we think it's, oh, not, nothing. That's like indulgent or that's something that is wasting my time or I'm bored. But really it's in that quiet space that the ideas come, that the insights come. Going for that walk or taking that moment to just be still or do that, take that time for yourself. Like there's magic in that. So, you know, when was the last time you had a great idea while you were, you know, clocking away at your computer, you know, checking your emails? It doesn't work that way because there's all of this static. So, you know, what I'm excited to talk with Rachel about is making that shift and new techniques for us to make that shift away from the static and the noise that prevents our natural intuitive nature from thriving. You know, I know you get this, Rachel. So, you know, what are, what are some, what led you to, to put this all in a book and, and really started this whole journey for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would like to say I learned the hard way and I don't like to say that, but it's the truth where I burned out of my job at Google about 10 years ago. And the, and the high level summary of that is I was not present. I mean, that's the bottom line. I, I was just really focused on output, like getting stuff done, checking things off my to-do list, but I really wasn't aware of what I was doing in the moment, I, I really wasn't aware of people around me and maybe what they were sensing, because my thought is if I was around someone who wasn't present, I'd be like, hey, what's up? Like, hello, are you there? And I think that was me. I mean, just being too, super transparent and honest. And I was getting feedback that I wasn't doing well in my job. And really just one day my manager was like, you know, I don't know if this job was a fit for you. And to me, that was my wake up call. And I, I had no training at all. I had training in journaling basically, but I had no training in mindfulness or emotional intelligence or, or anything in terms of neuroscience, the things that I know now. So I really took a break. I, took, I asked to take an unpaid leave. And I think I needed that to course correct. And, and my belief now is if we're actually instituting a, pause way of life, right? If you're integrating that nothing, nothingness in your daily life, just like even a couple moments a day, you're on the right path. But for me, I didn't really know that. And I think a lot of us out there don't know that. And so I ended up, like I said, learning the hard way, but I did go back to Google. I got a new role. I took myself out of the busy mode. That was my three months. I actually didn't fill up my schedule. I didn't plan my trips that I would normally take. I was like, no, I got to figure out what's going on with me because it's clearly not working. I was strained and exhausted and stressed and like, who's been there? I don't know if anyone resonates with this, or maybe you know someone who feels like they are on their hamster wheel and they cannot get off no matter what. And I feel like that was me. And so that was how I learned how to pause. And I, and I realized I learned so much being away from what I had known, right? Taking myself out of the mix. And, and also started studying after that emotional intelligence and really just doing things I loved more at work. Like I was, I started to host speakers who I thought had important messages to share like you, Kim. And if I was still there, I would be hosting you. But, I, but, like, <laughs> but the idea is that it was a, it was a learning curve and a skill that I had to learn. And that's what I truly believe that pausing is a skill. And it's when we get off of autopilot because when we're, when we're on autopilot, we might be doing nothing if we're spaced out watching Netflix for five hours, but is that really, is that in service to your doing? Is that really right. intentional and helpful for you? My guess is there's probably, to some extent, it might help once in a while, right? Just to zone out, but ultimately we can intentionally shift our behavior in service to our doing. And that's what I think the power of pause is all about and what I help people with now. I love that. And, and I love that, dis, that differentiation between zoning out and really just sort of escapism, right? Because we want to like get out of that place of mind, get into our no mind zone, as, as we like to call it. But you don't want to just become, move into escapism, like, you know, having a drink or like zoning out on TV or just, just, just escaping yourself, right? That's a different thing altogether. Present. That was my life. That was my right. whole life, right. by the way. And, and, I, and I, did. I did a lot of things like I was an overachiever, right? Where I was a five-time national champion rower and I got my MBA and I lived in New York, like all these things, but they were really distractions to being present in my, like right. looking back on, if I had to be really honest. Yep. It's hard to be present, right? Because it, we have to confront ourselves and, and be it's with ourselves. But I also love what you said 
it, you don't have to do this thing like, oh, it's a grand gesture of I'm going to spend hours in meditation. It can be very simple little bits, whether 15 minutes at a time, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night, right? Just you can just start out with yeah, really small exactly. Yeah, and it's about what works for you. So one person might really like a sitting meditation. Another person might do brushing your teeth and feeling the bubbles on your on your mouth and your tongue. And that's enough. And it's great to just be present using those five senses. So it's about experimenting. I call those daily pauses and everyone's going to be different. And that's, what's so exciting is it's not like a one size fits all. Maybe meditation isn't for you. You can't stand it. That's not what's going to work. Well, great. Like let's find something that does. And then that's what you can be present with. It might even be eye contact, right? Like just being with someone present here, we've got a whole group of us. Like, what if we were just to make eye contact? Like, that's actually really fulfilling. It'd be what I would call an intentional shift in behavior too. <laughs> I like it. Intentional shifts of behavior. Write that one down. Because, right. Because, yeah. right. It, Cause it's about that, that attention and intention. And we talk with intuition development a lot about that too, because our intuition is deeply tied into our attention. And the more attention we pay to our intuition towards our little signs and synchronicities and those drop-ins and the resonance within us, the more that we tune into that, the stronger it gets, right? So it's, it's also opening space. So when you put your intention on this and you open space for it to happen, then it's, it's much easier to do that more in your life. So you're not always feeling like you have to run around a mile a minute. It just feels comfortable to be still and go for that walk or, you know, you, you can do fun things. It's not just about like sitting, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's, and like I said, it's a skill, right? So if we're really wired to do a lot of different things, which we all are, it takes discipline and, and, and a different set of skills to not do things, but it's in service to your being and a service to your doing, I should say. And that's what I think is so powerful. And, and it unlocks your intuition think that's well, like the bottom line which which is really cool <laughs> well that leads me to my next question and 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 I just I just saw that note from Walter that said he finds crafting to be a really good source of meditation and it, that it's true that whether it's something artistic or creative or cra like meditative things like knitting things like that can be really visceral and and a great way to pause and and to open up that um sort of dimension so I'm so curious how you know all of this stuff and in this shift that you've witnessed in your life, like how has that helped your intuition and what ways has your intuition changed since you started doing this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've noticed a bunch of different things. And I, so when, for me, when I, when I, my last week of my, my pause was actually Burning Man. So I don't know if I, there's any one who wow. Burning Man here knows <laughs> what it is, but it's this big, global conference in the middle of the desert where there's nothing to distract you. It's like, you literally have to be present to yourself. And I had never gone before, but for me, I met a person at my camp. I was actually at a meditation camp and I was like, ah, that's exciting, but I'm okay. Like, I don't need to do that. But the person who was there leading those meditations started, we started a friendship and he invited me to read his book, which was called how to meditate in a New York minute by Mark Thornton. And I started meditating. And all of a sudden it was like, I had this access that I had never felt before to what was going on inside of me. And I would, I would consider that my intuition one-on-one, like my baseline intuition. And so since then I've grown and developed it. And I think one of the exciting parts of, of, pausing is that you're doing different things like Walter crafting, you're using different parts of your brain. And to me, that's a whole nother way to access your intuition. So if we're like many of us are over indexed on the uh, left hemisphere, right? So we're analytical, linear thinking, our world is kind of set up that way. And so when we activate the, the right side of our brain, which is more of the visual and the creative space, visionary space, that's a space that we don't access a lot. At least I hadn't in my past historically. And so I feel like I get all this new data when I'm in there, right? Whether it's a vision for myself or what I wanna do for the day or what I shouldn't do for the day, what I need, maybe rest or maybe sunshine. And, and to me, that's what I know about my own intuition. So having a practice of pausing, even if it's the daily pauses, and I do try to meditate now 15 minutes in the morning. That's like my, my meditation plus journaling at least two minutes. 
then I feel that that's stronger. And the more I do it daily, the more I practice it, the deeper it develops. And, and it's only getting stronger, which is exciting, Kim. I read, I read your book and I'm working with um, like just some other experts in the field to really hone in on my knowingness. That's my mm-hmm. channel is my knowingness. I know there's different ways to kind of tap into that intuition, right? Seeing, hearing and knowing and, and feeling or something like that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So it's, getting, it's getting better and, I, and it's also choosing to trust in myself in those mm-hmm. moments of pausing mm-hmm. where I'm like, this is my chance for my body to talk and, and to share. And that's what breath work does too, by the way, which we're gonna experiment with where you're accessing different parts of, the, of your intelligence from the neck down that you may not otherwise have access to because your brain isn't in charge like it normally is in the day your, bo- your body is because your breath is regulating. So that's really cool too. Yeah, all of it, all those different dimensions. You kind of covered it all, body, mind, or body. hearts and, oh. and the creative stuff because and it, I love what you said earlier that it really just sort of does just open up to that whole new set of data. And I think that's something that we forget about when we're just living those like regular hamster wheel life is we're just doing the linear stuff. We're doing what's next. But when we're not living creatively and intuitively, we're missing out on a lot of data that can guide us and inspire us and move us in in ways that are really extraordinary. So I love the way that you put that. And, you know, I'm really excited to see some techniques that you have. I think you have three keys for us today that we're going to use to connect to this space and move into our our knowingness and our and our inner peace. Yeah, and, and I'll share these three keys just as more like knowledge points, and then we'll move into the workshop segment. But real quick, I think we've been kind of saying this, Kim, but the first key is to just know it's okay to pause. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but here's the other thing. It takes courage to pause, right? It takes courage to go against the grain sometimes, and, and living in a always on, as my husband called it, an ASAP culture and 24-7 life and then tech or whatever your industry might be, we're really tempted to not pause. And we might think we feel like slackers or that it's not okay. And so the idea is that it it actually is more than okay. It's important and necessary in service to your doing. So being, knowing knowing that you can take the plunge, I call it the pause plunge and, and just be with yourself and present to that and just experience all the feels, experience all the, the the, the knowing and what's so the data and, that's okay. That's exactly where you're meant to be, where you're supposed to be. So knowing it's okay to pause is the first key. The second key is, like I was saying, to activate that right hemisphere. So knowing that this is the under index part, I did a whole workshop this summer with my mentor on the on the left brain, right brain intelligence. And it was fascinating because I think of the right brain as my heart space. Like it's it's somehow to me connected. I don't know what the science is for that, but We know that there are very different pathways and neurons that fire in the right and left brain. But when we activate that right brain hemisphere, that is our intuitive space, in my opinion. It's more accessible there because that's that. And you probably know that too, right? Am I I on the right I 100% agree with all of that. Heart and intuition, all of that, the feeling. Yeah. And so we have in the, in the pause, the journal, there's a page that's blank and that's such a great space for drawing or poems or the things that would be more on that right side. And it's fun. Like you can give yourself exercises to be like, okay, I'm only going to answer in my right brain for this question. <laughs> You're like, whoa, like what does that even look like? <laughs> yeah. What does that look so, like? So just activating that part as much as you can, just to doing something daily can even work, right? And then the third key is to have a practice, to have a to have a pause practice. And I like to call these daily pauses, which we've been talking about. But that that can lead us, you know, we're going to do a little bit of this breath work and journaling. And those are great. Those are two really, really good examples of pausing. And even if you don't do the breath work, you can just have a belly breath pause, like literally one breath of inhaling through your nose, like. I just did that too. <laughs> and slowly exhaling. Like to me, that's pausing, like that's done, right? And it didn't take any time, but we could feel different. We flood our system, rest and digest mode activates. And we're in another yeah, just space. that little moment like that can just make such a huge difference, right? Just there's just such a relief. And one of the things we do in Intuition Lab when we take those little moments is sometimes you just make yourself smile. You just smile, and it's amazing what how different you can suddenly feel with just a moment and a smile. You can shift your energy, you can release, and just open up for this these insights to come. So 
I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you guys excited to try all this we stuff? Can, you're cutting out. <laughs> Say that again. Are, I thought I, I know, did I, did you cut out for others? I don't know. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. We just said we're excited. We're excited to try this stuff. So um, I think at this point, um, I just want to thank you for sharing all of that stuff. I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can lead us. I think folks, if you have a pen and paper near you at this point, it might be a good time to have them on hand. And Rachel's going to, you know, take us through this process and, and help us to start practicing some pause and opening up to some space that might connect us deep, more deeply to our intuition. So, all right, so, I'm going to turn it over to you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And so just to give us a little setup, what we're going to do is I'll have a couple journal prompts to start, and then I'll go through the breath pattern we'll use. And we'll probably be doing some breathing for six, so for, for about six minutes, maybe six to seven minutes. And we're actually going to do that. I'll be leading that. So you don't have to worry about memorizing the breath patterns or anything, but, but we're not going to have music. And that was an intentional decision just to really. And knowing that that's okay. So we'll do that. And then there'll be a couple of prompts to follow up in the journal. So you can reflect on what your experience was like as you did the breath work. And I'm curious if anyone here has done breath work, type it into the chat. Just, just, just type in breath work. If you have done that in the past, or if you're brand new to it, just type in brand new. It's all good. If you've never done it, that's a-okay. We're, I'm going to be walking you through everything. So like grab a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. And I want to start us off with a quote. So pause the journal. We'll be using a few prompts from this. And what I like to do is flip through any type of book and just read that page sometimes. So before we met, I did that. And the quote that I had for the day I picked was from Ram Das. And the quote is none other than be here now. So how you can't get more appropriate than that being here now. That knowing. And I invite you to take your pen and pencil, like where our theme is intuition, right? So it's these, how to stay calm and accessing your intuition. So the first prompt right now, and I'll give you like 30 seconds to a minute to answer it is today I desire, today I desire. So just go ahead and type, just write in, what do you desire? It might be to get something done that you wanna just be really explicit about, or maybe it's a deeper hunger, a yearning you have that you really want to fulfill. I'll give you some time to complete that thought and just let the pen flow. The idea with journaling is you're not overthinking anything. This is just for you accessing different parts of your brain and your body, processing information. Today I desire. And then when you're complete with that, give you another 10 seconds or so to finish up. One little thing I can do to move myself towards that today. So the prompt is one little thing I can do today towards it. One little thing I can do today towards it. And this is towards that desire, whatever you wrote down in the first prompt. One little thing I can do to pay towards, towards it. I'll give you another 10 seconds. And then the last prompt we'll do before we move into the breath pattern is a, a support note to myself. So what's a little note that you can write yourself? You could call it a love note, a support note, acknowledgement note, it all works. It's as if you were writing to your higher self from your higher self too. What would be something you'd wanna hear? Mm -hmm. 
when you're done, you can read what you wrote just to process that, bring it in. Putting your pen down and just letting me know in the, just looking up when you're finished. I have everyone here to see. So the priming of the journaling before breath work is actually to kind of get our minds al aligned with our, our processing of our body and what we're thinking, but also our intuition, right? And <clears throat> when we write things down, our brain processes it differently. And so we're going to have a mantra for our breath work today. And the mantra that I chose is, I am here. I chose that before the Ram Dass quote, but it is, and that's my intuition, I think, that chimed in. I am here. So we're going to, I'm going to be guiding us through these breath patterns that I'll share in a moment, but we'll also be bringing that into our breathing. Okay. So here's how it will go. We're going to do just a starting off with natural breathing, inhaling, if you can, through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. That's called the conscious halo active breath. So just inhaling through our nose and exhaling through our mouth a little slower than we inhaled. You can go at your own pace. This is all about what feels good for you. And notice your body as we do that. So that's the first breath pattern we're going to do. And then we're going to shift into what's called a pulse breath. And all the pulse breath is, is a count of two inhaling and count of two exhaling. So it looks and feels like this. So it's inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhaling through our nose, exhaling through our mouth. So if you wanna practice this with me a couple of times right now, feel free. And if you can't breathe through your nose, you can modify it with your mouth, whatever feels good. Remember, it's not about perfection. Just simply giving it a try and doing what feels good for you. There's no right or wrong. And then we'll return to the conscious halo active breath. So that's the inhale through our nose. And then we'll end with an, a top hold, which is really just inhaling, holding at the top. You can exhale. We might do a bottom hold holding at the bottom here and there. And that's just feeling the breath at the end of your breath, exhaling and holding that breath. And we might go back into a couple other things, but that's what, those are the core patterns we'll, we'll use. And don't worry, I'll be reminding us what those are as we go. You don't have to remember anything. And simply remember that this space that we're creating right now is our container and our sacred space to just invite in being present. I am here. All right, so whatever you need to do to get comfortable, if you'd like to uncross your arms or put your pens down or take your glasses off or put your glasses on or uh, un uncross your arms, shrug your shoulders, move your neck, whatever feels good to just settle into your space, that's all welcome. <sighs> Perfect, and you're just doing some normal breathing here. And the idea is that we're inviting in presence. I am here. And if it helps to close your eyes, I invite you to close your eyes now, if that feels good for you. And just allow yourself to find the stream of energy within you that you can notice. It might be the top of your head, just feeling and sensing down as you go down through your face, feeling your jaw, like I said, we hold a lot of tension in our jaw. You can simply move it from side to side. Just noticing what's here today as you continue to go down through your shoulders, scanning the body, scanning your chest and your heart space. Settling this area, just noticing what's here knowing I am here as you continue down through your organs, your 
stomach, your pelvis, down through your arms and down through your thighs to your knees. Noticing if there's any sensations or tightness or back of your legs, down through your ankles, down through your toes and sending that scan down through the floor of the, the, the bottom of your floor, just down through your feet. And just noticing again, what is here today? What do I desire? Knowing I am here. And know that you have complete control over this session. You are sovereign and I am simply guiding you, knowing all is well as you just continue the normal breath pattern here, knowing everything is safe. You are so safe and held. And just to relax, we'll begin the breath pattern here, just that halo active conscious breath, inhaling through our nose, exhaling like an audible sigh through your mouth. Like you could hear the person next to you if they were doing this. And going at your own pace now. Inviting in anything that chooses to be here with you today. That's it. And allowing yourself to be curious. I am here. What is here with me? What parts are present for me today? Just continue to breathe. You're doing great. And allowing yourself just be curious, knowing all is well. And if you're noticing any resistance or thoughts, that's all welcome. And allow yourself to ask yourself, what is here? What is that resistance today? Oh, okay, and just being present. knowing you are exactly where you need to be today. And if you feel called to move any parts of your body, maybe you wanna shake out your hands or move your neck or roll your neck or move and shrug your shoulders or tap your feet, know that that is all welcome. Energy moves through the body in three ways. The breath, sound, and movement. So letting the body do the work here, we're gonna move into the second breath pattern, that pulse breath, just inhaling twice through the nose, Keep breathing. Do a round of the pulse breath. Pulse breath is so great to match with movement. So if you feel called, if your body is telling you it wants to move in a certain way, I would invite you to follow that. Just whatever feels good for you, trusting, What's here? And you can speed it up or slow it down. Just trust in what your body needs. Taking one last big double inhale and a double exhale through the mouth. 
returning to your normal breath here. And on the next inhale, you're just gonna hold that breath at the very top, whenever that feels good for you, filling your lungs with oxygen, allowing every cell access to your presence, holding that breath, inviting your body to release that breath when it feels ready and releasing when you feel, feel that it feels good for you. Returning to that conscious two-part breath now, just inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth, deep breaths. An audible sigh if that feels good. Really sensing and feeling into, I am here now. Taking one more top hold on this next inhale, whenever that feels good for you. Just filling those lungs up even more, even deeper. Feeling that capacity, your capacity grow. Holding that breath as long as you feel fit for that breath to be inside of you. And releasing that breath when you feel ready, letting the body do the work. Normal breathing here when that feels good. Trusting again, everything your body is doing, this wisdom you are accessing. I am here now. And now we'll do a final hold at the bottom on the next exhale. The next exhale, you're simply going to not inhale, but hold the exhale at the bottom. Feeling into this beautiful capacity, this vastness that is you, the source of all you are. I am here. And allowing your body to know when it's okay and ready to inhale. And slowly taking that breath, inhale. Releasing the breath pattern now, just normal breathing. Letting the body breathe itself in whatever feels natural for you. Just feeling totally relaxed. Feeling your feet on the floor. Feeling the chair beneath you. Just notice as you sit there, what has shifted, if anything, how is the energy in your nervous system now? And simply acknowledging that. As we breathe in the breath, we're breathing in energy intentionally and consciously in a new way. And just invite yourself to connect with yourself now. If it feels good for you, inviting you to take a hand and just placing it anywhere in your body that would feel good. You can even ask your body, where would you like my hand to go? And let your intuition guide you. Maybe you put both hands on your body. Let your body decide. That's it. And just acknowledging this emotional connection that you are and that you have as you bring yourself back into this space. And I invite you to slowly open your eyes if they were closed, just fluttering your eyes open. 
and allowing yourself to feel gratitude for your experience, thanking your body for whatever showed up today. Know that it's all good. And when you feel ready, we're going to do a little reflection here to pick up your pen and your journal. When you feel ready, no rush. We have a couple more prompts. So the, and I'll put these into the chat, but the first prompt, my intuition is here to tell me, my intuition is here to tell me today and fill in the blank. What is my intuition here to tell me today? You might have received any messages during your breathing. This is a great opportunity to, to write those down. Anything you'd like to document for yourself. What were the messages? My intuition is here to tell me today. And the next prompt, when you feel ready, in the, in the chat, it's also there. What is my vision, knowing I am here? What comes up for you? This might be tied to your desire, but it might not be. It might be totally different. What is my vision, knowing I am here? And then the final prompt. Being here now helps me what? Fill in the blank. Being here now helps me dot, dot, dot. I'll give you another 30 seconds or so just to read those prompts. Allow yourself to soak them in, knowing this is your intuition activated with a little help from your breath. And and if anyone feels called to share anything from your experience or just what that was like for you or just wanting to reflect out loud, that's also welcome here. There's no pressure to do that. But if you feel like that would be something to support you or that maybe others might want to hear, feel free to share. And I just invite oh. you to popcorn out. I will get the ball rolling on that one because um, I had a pretty cool thing happen. Um, first of all, Rachel, I want to thank you. That was, that was wonderful. Um, wonderful. Just so nice to take that space. And it really, what, what blew my mind was this really ties into something that we do at Intuition Lab. Because the thing about, you know, we talk about we get into the space, the magic happens. Like intuition is this kind of little magic that happens. So when you when you asked me, I'm like to tell you my story, what happened here. You asked me what um, what I would want my higher self or the universe to say to me, right? So I wrote down four words, and it's actually a post that if you go to my Instagram right now, you could actually see it. Uh, it's still up from an Instagram that I post yesterday. It's you are doing great. And to me, it struck me yesterday, it resonated with me because I feel like those are four words that we don't hear enough of as adults, right? When you're a kid, people say, oh, you're doing a great job. But when we're older, it's just all the standard of, you know, whatever, and we're going through life. And, and just that constant reminder of that you're doing great, you know, the best that you, that you can is, is great, right? So I wrote down those, those words that I wanted to hear. 
And did you or did you not? You did. I can tell you, you said those exact words, those exact words. When you were talking to us, you said you are doing great. And you can go back and watch it in the recording because I looked down. I was like, did she say the exact words? And I looked it down. I have it written right here on my thing. Amazing. You are doing great. You didn't say great job or everyone's, you said those exact four words. So that touched my heart um, as what we call an intuition lab, a God wink or just one of those magic validations that you get. Like I wanted to hear it from the universe and I literally like instantly heard it from the universe. So that was so cool. So thank Amazing. you for that. <laughs> oh my gosh, Kim, that's incredible. And, and uh, oh my gosh, you're making me tear up. I think what, I, what I'm hearing too is when we have a collective, like we have a group mind right now, right? We hear messages from others that may be that intuition, but it's because we have the mirror neurons and we're kind of borrowing each other's brains and the higher powers that be in the universe. It's like we just can pick up on stuff that we may not hear, but then someone else gives us that clue, which is what I'm hearing happened. And I'm just like blown away. Like, whoa. It, it happens all Mic the drop time. Moment. Right. The, 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 guy, the folks that are here from our, from our classes, this kind of stuff happens all the time. You have that. We have that interconnectedness from that sort of invisible intuition field and, and, and life will just pull that through at the right time and, and deliver those messages. So this is just case in point of how it 100% <laughs> opens up your intuition, opens you up. You were just flowing those things. When you were talking, you were already tuned into your intuition, even though you were guiding us because you were just letting these things intuitively flow through you. And this phrase just pops through. You don't even notice what you're doing, right? You didn't even realize you were doing it. Yeah, I remember saying that. I don't Naturally. even know. What I'm doing. Yeah, you can go back and watch it. It's yeah. there. And you know what else? There's proof. You guys can go look at my Instagram story because I bet it's still there too. So this is what I love: actual evidence that like these kind of things are uh, serendipitously aligning. Um, and I also want to say, in terms of this this breath work, it's so important. You can just you know feel that like unblocking when you're doing the like the layered breath work and the releasing because all that tension that we hold every day, you know, we're just all tense and tight. And we have all this like energy that we keep in that blocks our flow too, our creative flow. Like if you're stuck and you have like creative blocks, just doing this kind of stuff is good just to get the energy moving because intuition information blows on energy. And if we're stuck, it's not going to go. So even just from a energy perspective, that breath work is so felt so good to me, um, unblocking and, and just letting all that stuff flow through. Oh, well done. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> High five for that chair. And I also, like, I think I said it too, if you can do all three of the, the, the methods that energy does move through us. So breathing, movement, and sound, then you're going to clear the blocks. You, you will. And that's the beauty and the power of this modality is that you can go and move through anything, basically healing trauma, accessing intuition, becoming more everything that you want to be more authentic. I'd say. Yeah. Well thanks. Said. Great chair. Well said. Anybody else? Anybody else want to share anything interesting that happened or anything good they felt when they did the exercise? Well, everyone is 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 playing it um, you know, quiet here. So I'm gonna just jump in. So Yay! <laughs> just break the trend. Uh beautiful, beautiful exercise. Um uh Rachel, I I I love it. And um, I, I could, you know, reinforce the same words that Kim is saying. Uh, every time that we do breath work, we reconnect energy and reconnect ourselves. So this intentional pause that you're, um, you're calling or this intentional reconnect to ourselves, it's so, so important. Um, and especially we, you know, can, we, we bring the idea of breath um, being a way of kind of refocus or re, um, reshaping our, ourselves to be here now, as you said, um, and, and, and to somehow stop us being too attached to the thoughts, which is the doorway to the intuition. So especially, we didn't know exactly, well, I didn't know exactly what will be the kind of exercises you were kind of proposing. Uh, so just the fact of following that, I just stopped thinking about anything that I was thinking. And at that point, when you said, okay, my intuition is telling me that, you know, things start popping up. <laughs> so it's so, so interesting how things connect because this is another way of reconnecting to ourselves and opening the door to intuition. 
Uh, yeah. In my case, you know, I know Kim, you know me very well too. Um, I'm very visual. So, you know, of course I saw, you know, stars and, and sun approaching. And for me, you know, clear guidance that, uh, you know, this is the doorway of, of the light and doorways of finding uh, the, my true self uh, through intuition. So uh, I am the right path and I know that I'm with uh, the right teacher. Um, so, <laughs> right, Kim. Right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Love it. So, um, thank you for again reinforcing that and and for uh, giving us the opportunity to open this uh, inner space, which is what I call what uh, you're uh, inviting us to do. Beautiful. Yeah. Well said. Thank you, Juan. That's so cool. Yeah, and I know I didn't even get into the benefits of breath work. I probably can share that. It sounds like some of you have done breath work in the past, but not only does it in, allow you to access parts of you that you don't normally have access to, it actually, there's so many things that improves. Your immunity improves, your sleep can get better, your uh, cardiovascular can get better, and you're increasing the blood and oxygen flow to your brain. So that's part of the whole process, why we have these intuitive hits while we have breath work, because we're generating more oxygen and we go into another state where we have actually increased CO2 in our bodies. It's called alkatosis. Mm. And we're, we're creating neural connections while we're in a rest and digest mode that wouldn't otherwise happen. That's the whole science behind it. So it's actually wow. proven and backed by science, this whole process and methodology, which is profound in itself. But then people get things like visualizations. Your whole brain is wired in a different way that it would otherwise normally be wired. Isn't that cool? I just think that's the best thing. And you just did that. That is so cool. That's such a great like back back end description, right? Of all the stuff that's happening with the oxygen and neuro. Yeah, you know, we just yeah. do it. We don't actually ask how it works, but that makes sense. Really, it does. Just like you know, kind of enlivening everything down even to the physical level. Pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we and we did about seven minutes of that, by the way. So I've done like I do meditative sessions where you're lying down. It's more of a thirty minute to, uh, breath. Come like imagine if you had thirty minutes of that. What can happen? And it's, and it isn't, it is profound. People have radical intuition and shifts. <laughs> <laughs> I like that radical. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, so, so everybody's good. Anybody else want to say anything? We can still open up a minute here for any space. You can put it in the chat too, if that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I did put into the chat, uh, the free gift links. There's a Rachel's breathwork breathwork booster. I'm also going to email that out to you if you don't want to get it now. And also my genius guide, which is, um, has some little ways to get to that extraordinary insight in your life. Um, so, so, wow, this has been so fun. Uh, I just, I just personally want to thank you, Rachel, for guiding us and for, for doing all this yeah. stuff with us. And well, thank and you for having me. It was so fun. And just a note on that booster. So it's basically what we just did, but with music and then a different mantra. So you can download the audio. So you have the MP3 and you don't even need to look at the video if you don't want to. But the idea is that it's just another opportunity to have a different mantra and see what shows up for you. And, uh, and it's exciting to kind of try them all out, different ones. Awesome. Well, I think that is definitely worth trying because the music thing, I really wanted to try that too. So this is a good opportunity for folks to, to yeah. do that at home. And um yeah and it, it does say it's for women but i'm guessing it's for the boys it's too. for everybody yeah I, 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 it's a it's actually brand new i i only have had it a couple weeks i made it for another gift for women so it, it applies to everybody so don't worry about the executive women name and if you i guess if you are an executive woman like props to you because it'll be extra special for you i guess but it's all the same. it doesn't matter it's for everybody awesome yeah. wonderful what is it anybody else have anything else to share no well, it was great seeing everybody. Thank you all for coming. We're going to do another one of these in the next month or so. So please come back um, and stay connected with us on Facebook and our groups. And we look forward to seeing you all again soon. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kim, for having me. It's been an awesome experience and blessings to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Blessings. Thank you so much. It was thank wonderful. You. Thank Bye, you. Bye. 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 Bye.